I recently was looking for a way to improve the search results that were coming back from the large language model for my application PodQuest, which transcribes podcasts and allows you to ask questions about the things that happen in the podcast. I was using a method called retrieval augmented generation, which takes a set of documents, in this case, the transcript of the podcast, and uses an existing LLM to quickly apply the vector embeddings of the transcript to its knowledge base in order to answer questions for a very specific context. And it does this on the fly. Then I came across this article in Towards Data Science on Medium called Forget RAG, the future is RAG Fusion. I was interested because I needed to improve my LLM results. And so I decided to dig in and understand what RAG Fusion is all about. So what is it? Uh, well, it's this, if you can make sense of it. And in typical research paper fashion, uh, it involves a lot of numbers and mathematical notation and citations. The key claim here is that RAG Fusion consistently outperforms retrieval augmented generation on a number of different tests. How's it different? Well, the approach proposed in this article here is to essentially split a user's query into a number of queries, perform a vector search on each of those, and then apply the reciprocal rank fusion algorithm to all of the documents in that query, assuming they came back in order of relevance, to re-rank them. And based on those re-ranked documents, you would conduct the user's original query and presumably get a better response. So I decided to put that to test with PodQuest, and I will show you what that looks like. I'm just going to search for a podcast. This is my test podcast, which is just a short excerpt of a podcast. So it's a little faster to transcribe, but still takes a bit. Now, on the back end here, we can see what's happening. Okay, so we have our transcript now. This is in a timestamp SRT format, and it's been transcribed. So let's ask the question, what are the key trade-offs to consider when implementing AI technology, according to the podcast. Okay, so you can see very quickly, it took all of these documents, it applied a score to them in order of where they appeared in the search results, and then it applied the algorithm to re-rank them. So here is that re-ranking happening. And so for each query, we get things that are re-ranked, and then it merges the consistent documents that show up according to their scores. And then it orders them. And then we ask the question. So now that we have that, you can see the original answer would have been energy required, cost of pre-trained models, and intangible benefits. And with RRF, we say social anxiety, relief provided by AI, potential for AI to reduce company goals, the carbon footprint of AI, and the increasing computation costs of AI. I'm not sure what it means by reduced company goals, but one thing you can see in this response is that it is applying different lenses to the question. So it's considering the question from a variety of different contexts, not just, say, technology. It's also a little less vague. The intangible benefits is a pretty vague response. Here, I think we have some clear statements about the trade-offs in AI. So the code I used to generate these results is a bit tied up in all of the other code for PodQuest, but I'll try to make a version of it available on GitHub and post a link. And this is in Node.js using Langchain. I also made a Google Colab notebook with a much more easy to understand example of how this works, which I took from an example bit of code posted here by that original author that I showed you. So I adapted this to work with Langchain and I will post a link to this Colab notebook where you can see that running. And what it does is it installs all of these dependencies. It's using Pinecone 
for the database. It's using Langchain, as I mentioned. The LLM is from OpenAI. Token is a tokenizer library to just break text down into tokens. Now, the next thing you need to do is you need to set up a Pinecone account and database, which is free and not too terribly intensive, and you will get an API key. You'll set up what's called an index, which is essentially a database, and it will give you an environment which will be based on the region of the world you're in and connecting to. And then you'll need your OpenAI AI API key. So you'll paste those values into this here. Next, we'll just import all of those dependencies and initialize our database. We're just going to provide it a list of dummy documents here. Obviously, these would be much more complex. And in the case of PodQuest, they would represent fragments of a transcript that had been broken down into smaller chunks of text. So we'll initialize a vector store in that database. So what that is doing is it's taking all of our documents and breaking them down into something that the vector database can quickly reference in order to work compatibly with the large language model. We'll do some more imports here, including pulling Langchain's RAG Fusion query generation. So this is interesting. This post was originally posted about two weeks ago. And then two days ago, Langchain had already implemented RAG Fusion in its code base. So this space is moving super fast, uh, which is great and also makes it hard to stay on top of things. But it means we are able to easily use RAG Fusion in Langchain. So we'll give it a prompt, and I didn't show this in my code. My prompt is slightly different, but essentially what it's doing is telling the LLM, based on this query, generate four more queries. So our original query is going to be impact of climate change. It's going to set up a retriever for the information in our vector store. And then using Langchain, it's going to re-rank all those results the same way as I did in PodQuest here. So now when we call that function with our original query, you can see it has done this re-ranking in the same way. And they haven't gone so far as to then ask the original question against the documents because they're not real documents. So we can't actually see what the large language model would respond in this case. But at any rate, this uses Python, so it'll be easier probably for most folks to implement into their existing AI work. And it's a much simpler and easy to abstract example of RAG Fusion in practice. So hopefully this is helpful.